I talked about uh, the work from um, of Dan and uh, Larry over at Armstrong and Hopkins in assisting the Chan Chaska game to be able to, uh, that rivalry to uh, be able to exist due to them moving games. So later in the season, they'll be able to do so. So just two great examples of the work you continue to do under, uh, under the most difficult of circumstances. So thank you. A lot of information to share today as we look at our uh, agendas. We have some updates and clarifications. Uh, both from uh, the state and, and also from our league here. Postseason information that will be coming out to you today around volleyball and football, along with winter sports guidance and information as well. Uh, Bylaw 208, as we continue to get questions around what coaches can and cannot do outside of the season. Um, we're going to talk about our website learning sessions and then also opportunities for district administration around uh, where we're at financially and um, information that Eric can provide to them. Uh, so if we can go on to the next slide here, please, slide four. Uh, Jody and I are going to talk a little bit about um, information and updates. So in working with the state, uh, Eric will clarify that, MDE and MDH, uh, we're going to um, allow you to continue to provide opportunities at halftime for an indoor facility of sorts for both teams. Now, ideally what you're doing is you're using a facility that is in or around your stadium. Uh, if you have to, right, use a facility that is within your school. Think about that um, facility guidelines and maximum occupancy. Uh, I would recommend that if the home team typically stays out by the field and the visiting team goes into the school that you may reverse that, right? We want to minimize exposure control environments, but as temperatures as they are, uh, you can provide a shelter of sorts for halftime and think about that equity for both teams, what that looks like both from an optics standpoint, but also from a safety standpoint, following MDH guidelines, following our guidelines, you can allow for an indoor facility to be used for your student athletes at halftime and hopefully that, that assists you. Uh, we continue to look at postponements and uh, not only disruptions from COVID, but now from weather. Uh, there has been a decision made around our guidelines that football conceptually can play a two game week. So a Monday, Friday option for varsity or a Tuesday, Saturday for varsity is an option for you. Again, you need to follow the daily limits and guidelines according to bylaw 500, uh, the 500 series and you cannot exceed that seasonal limitation. So there's no more than six games. Our recommendation is still one game a week. But there is flexibility, especially again with, with weather around the Monday, Friday option or a Tuesday, Saturday option. Um, that is in a situation again, where there is a disruption. If you're coming off of um, a quarantine, that is gonna be a different scenario. We do, we do have to continue to minimize risk and where your student athletes are ready from an individual basis. So when they come off um, and make sure they're physically ready to play does not change. There's also uh, information sent out around um, gators and or uh, what you can and cannot do uh, around the, the helmet situation. So gators continue to, continue to be allowed. Um, NFHS language refers to how you wear them. Ideally, they're meant to be worn under uh, the helmet and or mask. The reason this was sent out is some of them have been worn over the mask that would continue to be uh, illegal. So we're talking the face mask itself. So questions or concerns around that gaiters can be worn. They should be worn up over uh, and inside uh, the helmet when at all possible as well. So uh, that is it for football. Jody, uh, updates from you around volleyball. Thanks, Bob, and good morning, everyone. Um, with volleyball uh, falling on the last week of regular season uh, is the week of Thanksgiving. So November 23rd is a short week and that's the last week of the regular season for volleyball. So with the board approved uh, three matches per week during the last two weeks of the season, uh, the board were interpreting that to include the last two full weeks of the season. So you will be able to schedule three volleyball matches the week of November 9th and the week of November uh, 16th. Uh, the 23rd, which is again that last week is Thanksgiving week and it's a short week. Uh, we'll begin uh, section playoffs on November 30th 
And those will run through December 12th. Uh, and again, um, so when you look at your rescheduling, that is for uh, COVID postponements. And we do not want those um, games when they're played three days or three, three games or matches in a week uh, to be or to fall on consecutive days. So again, as you look at rescheduling, those are some of the things that you'll want to keep into consideration uh, regarding volleyball. And Bob, I will turn it back to you. All right, thank you, Jody. And uh, we continue to try and um, provide flex for our ability. No change is difficult, but hopefully uh, these will be uh, this will be information that will assist you. Eric, I'll turn it over to you at this time for uh, state. state uh, MDE, MDH uh, updates. Thanks so much, Bob, and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, despite Bob's uh, welcome of good afternoon, we're not quite there, but uh, days can be long. And uh, know that you're working really, really hard. All the con uh, conversations that I'm having and everyone else in our office, just know that we recognize the amount of uh, demands on your time. Uh, and we continue to work with you and try to assist in, in whatever way we can. Part of that is making sure that we work forward with uh, the state. And the state has uh, been uh, clear with us in our recent conversation around the fact of the goal here is that uh, we focus on uh, the state being one entity, whether it's MDE, MDH, or the governor, uh, they're really making decisions uh, together at all times. And we've really pushed them uh, to try and give us uh, more preview of where what direction things are going. But our whole conversation started with the fact of Everyone in the call wants our students to participate. We want students to be able to be in school to learn, and we want students to be able to participate in their sports and, and activities, those passions that they have. And all of that has to be filtered through some lens that is focused on safety. And it's gonna be critical as we go forward that we find ways to really get our uh, communities to support the fact of we need to, we need to uh, use uh, good practices and protocols to bring the county metrics down. State is gonna work hard to put together more uh, clearly defined county metrics and uh, models that can be looked at so that you as a district know how to address both learning models and activity participation. Uh, for me, it's probably the most frequent question of, so if we're here with this number and this is what we're doing in a learning model, what does that mean for our activity participation? Um, we know that everyone wants to play. Uh, we also know the rates continue to go up across the state and that's becoming more difficult. Uh, and so that ties directly into that last point of uh, our COVID data is coveted by the state uh, folks. They don't have other entities from the sports world that are regularly providing them with data around participation and how much of an impact is being felt in terms of interruptions, uh, COVID cases, close contacts, those kinds of things. And so they rely on us to provide that for our activities. Many of you on this call, I see about 180 of you probably do a great job of getting this done. Our typical numbers are around that 240 to, to 260 range the last couple of times. We really need to have, you know, when you think about volleyball having 400 teams, we should really have 400 uh, submissions of that. And, and I know it's another thing in your time. Uh, Laura keeps the data. So you can see that the average completion time and last time around was four minutes and 30 seconds uh, to get that done. Some of you much faster if you didn't have interruptions. Um, I still know that's an ask for you and, and yet we share that with them. As soon as we get it compiled, we send it off to the state for their use. And they're looking at ways that they could even incorporate this data within their dashboards uh, to assist in providing even more information, um, demonstrating that good practices are in place for our students and that uh, everything is being done safely is gonna be the most important thing for us to continue to step forward with uh, the next aspects of it. And uh, one final piece, uh, we have now put in place a, at a minimum um, meeting every single week uh, and we will continue forward with that for uh, whatever we can see into the future uh, to make sure that we're on the same page. So really, really critical there. Bob, I'll turn it back to you if there's anything else you want to add from those conversations. Yeah, great. I appreciate that, Eric, and great updates. And we continue to say with, with opportunities come responsibilities. And we're, uh, you know, we're, we're a big part of uh, the solution, we hope, in providing opportunities and managing uh, through a pandemic. So anything we can do to get that information submitted to share is, is, is vital to our existence. So we can go on to the next if slide I here. Uh, Jody and I will talk a little bit about um, heading into our postseason um, and documentation that you will get, or documents that you will receive around the guidelines. So that will go out today. You know, 
things that you're going to see, especially around football, are those, those crucial dates for postseason. Remembering that it's a high seed will host throughout. Uh, there can be a um, um, neutral site, so to speak, if sections are utilizing a neutral site. And as we look outside today, you might be using more neutral sites than, than home sites in certain scenarios. And we hope the weather takes a turn. Again, spectators, always a question of how you're managing that. Um, and what does ticketing look like in those scenarios? So postseason will go out uh, today for volleyball and football, uh, along with other information that is, um, that is coming out. So uh, questions around that, feel free to enter in the chat or any of the other information as well that'll assist us in, in answering that as we get that information out. Um, on to um, our next slide here. Winter sports, uh, winter sports guidance will be coming out here shortly. In fact, we're going to try and get dance out to you today uh, because I think we're really close to being done on that. And we'll, you know, that means we'll get postseason and um, dance uh, information out here today for uh, the guidance and the guidelines. The rest of it will be coming next week by uh, October 30th. Some of the things that are continuing to include, we there are continuing to we're we're continuing to include within this information. Things like the start dates, the limitations around scheduling games per week, uh, teams per contest, so on and so forth, very similar. Um, we continue to get the question around basketball and can we do a, a boys and girls back-to-back uh, -back games? There's nothing that's going to say that you can't. We're going to continue to ask why you would do that. Is it a good idea if you're trying to increase spectators in a venue, if that's why you're doing so, you probably want to uh, think about that and think about how spectators are coming in and out, uh, what else is going on, what other levels are playing, and increasing time in between games. Again, how do we maximize our, our, our safety and minimize our risk and uh, not, not giving up a controlled environment? Those are all things that are going to allow us to continue to play uh, if exposure or if an outbreak does occur. Uh, within that as well, you'll be seeing cheerleading updates, um, and guidelines as well as we move forward uh, into that winter season. Many of you wondering where we're at with cheerleading. We continue to work with the state as Eric has defined on items of this nature. On to slide eight. Uh, Bylaw 208 continues to come up and what coaches can and cannot do. Uh, Maybe around uh, captain's practice and or other uh, entities that are offering different opportunities that are outside of our realm. Again, what coaches may not do anytime it says direct, directing that student athlete to play in a league, attend a camp or clinic. That is by law. That should not occur. Again, down on that last bullet, direct or, or unduly influence a student athlete to participate in a non-school would be a violation of 208. Please assist your student athletes in staying eligible and please assist your coaches in making sure they have the opportunity to continue to coach this winter in following the guidelines and bylaw 208. This, this uh, information is taken right out of the handbook if you're looking for it as well. Uh, at this time, I'm gonna turn it over to you, Laura, as we uh, get into uh, the learning sessions. Right. Just a note, I did throw into chat also that the data that we're collecting from member schools, um, the, the document that we share back with you is what we're sharing with state. Um, we are not sharing school by school or even region by region data with them. Um, what you see that we've shared back with you is the same as they're seeing. So just a, a note here, um, in, a, in what turned out to be a very snowy week, um, we plan two learning days for ADs and others within their office. Um, did not turn out to be a great week for it with, again, all of the things that you are managing. But want you to know that these topics have been talked about and that we put resources out there for you to learn on your own time. On Tuesday, we talked about adding medical personnel to your homepage, which we continue to hear from the medical personnel that support your teams. It is incredibly important that they are able to communicate with each other. So that information, we talked about adding head coach designation, which again is a one-time thing that as we transition to a new website, your head coaches and those who are not currently acting as a head coach, but have that designation, that get, needs to get added to their record. And that is now able and ready for you to do that. 
And then we also talked on Tuesday about using Arbiter to view eligible officials and provided information about how you can access those lists. Today at nine o'clock and again at 12 o'clock, if you are able to join us, we're talking about a valuable tool for you, um, which are the directories that are located on your um, dashboard. If you are able to join us at 12, that would be great. Um, that invitation's gone out in a couple of updates. If you're not able to join us on the Getting Started Guide, there's a link right up at the top that says Getting Started Videos. Those are posted there for you to watch as, as it fits your schedule if a synchronous time does not work. Um, we'll continue to offer these sessions um, off and on as we move through the year and always try to find a time when things are a little bit quiet and then we get hit by snow and things don't quite turn out the way they wanted to. So trying to find multiple ways for you to access that information that's important to you. Um, so I'm gonna turn it to Eric to talk about engagement sessions and a bit about the foundation. Thanks, Laura, appreciate that. And uh, just as we do with our, uh, with our ADs on a weekly basis, it's important that we communicate with, uh, with other folks within the school settings. Um, the uncertainty and the newness of everything that we're doing this year certainly has gained a lot of attention uh, with, our, with our superintendents as well as with our school boards. Um, add to that the membership dues uh, that we uh, have had to institute in order for us to continue to provide the service and the programs that are part of the State High School League means that there's, there's an awful lot of attention uh, and there's a number of questions and so uh, similar to this kind of style uh, we are going to put together or we have put together zoom meetings uh, for the purpose of reaching those district-wide school administrators uh, and anyone is invited to attend I would say for this group that has been on lead for quite some time there isn't going to be a lot that you're going to learn uh, new or different yet if you would like to be a part of it and some of you have been asked by uh, superintendents perhaps to uh, to be a part of it and listen in certainly welcome to do that we have really targeted that superintendent, head of school, president, and school board member group um, to try and address a number of things. First of all, the question of what is it that's going on at the league if you don't have state tournaments? Uh, that's obviously a question that's out there. Um, what really contributes to all of the uh, finance challenges and, and what does that really mean and, and how did we get here? And didn't we see that coming? Things like that. Um, and we have three times that we're gonna do that. Uh, the first one will be tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. And then next Tuesday and next Thursday, we have an afternoon one and a morning one. And I believe that the Thursday one is actually a 9 a.m., not a 10 a.m. That might be entered incorrectly uh, for next week. Um, but I look forward to engaging with folks there, uh, answering lots of questions. We've received some communications from schools and or conferences. Uh, and so we're using those to develop the information and, and share that out uh, as best we can so people know and understand uh, what's going on at the high school league and there is there's nothing to hide the work is being done as you know on a, on a weekly and daily basis including things like a region secretary meeting yesterday as well as a foundation board meeting uh, the state high school league foundation does have some dollars that are uh, within its uh, budget right now and those are the dollars that were generated last year during uh, state tournaments that were held and section tournaments because there are state tax dollars that are generated on all those tickets. Those get moved uh, by uh, state statute over to the foundation and they then have the opportunity to make a determination of how much is going to come out in form A and how much is going to come out in form B. You'll see some written information coming your way shortly, but the uh, the foundation board did make a determination to suspend indefinitely the form B applications. Um, with the focus to make decisions coming forward in regards to Form A, but they are planning for a Form A distribution yet this uh, fall. Because of the late notice of that and the late meeting, those timelines for your application will be adjusted. They will be due on November 30th. And don't worry about writing things down because we will message you directly with that. We will update our website, get those dates on there correctly so that you can do the online submission that you did last year. Uh, historically, we've been in the low 200s for a number of applications. Last year, we were above 290. Uh, there's a good chance this year that we will crest 300, I would guess. Uh, I think our connectivity with our ADs through LEAD and other sources is much better. So please be looking for that opportunity to complete your Form A application. Again, it wouldn't be due until the end of November. That's different than most years. A lot of you have it kind of on that year-over-year -year list of things to make sure and get done, uh, but we'll message that directly. So with that, Laura, I'll turn it back to you. 
I should say Bob, sorry. Good, uh, thank you, Eric, and great information and consistent communication to the right people. Uh, we're, we're continuing to try to provide that along with serving you to the best of our ability. You'll note that we're sending information out again on Thursdays when at all possible to avoid those, uh, those Friday information, those late afternoon information uh, coming out to you. We know that always doesn't work. We're, we're taking that into account as well. So that being said, we'd like to continue to thank our liaisons for their work in assisting us and providing uh, really the, the uh, topics to address with you here at LEAD. They do a great job on Tuesdays and, and continue to meet. So that being said, uh, continue the great work that you're doing in clearing fields and providing opportunities uh, for our student athletes and all of our sports and activities. And we will see you uh, a week from today in the morning and not during the afternoon, like I stated earlier. So have a great day. Keep up the great work and thank you.